Lakeland Public Television presents Currents with host Ray Gildow. Sponsored by Nisswa Tax Service, offering tax preparation for individuals and businesses across from the City Hall in Nisswa and on the web at nisswatax.com. Hello everyone and welcome again to Lakeland Currents, where today we're going to be talking about solar energy. Um, there's a revolution occurring in Minnesota and around the world, places like Germany, even our neighbors to the north in Ontario, Canada. Uh, there's a huge movement to solar energy, especially at the commercial level and at the individual level in homes. And so today our, uh, our guest is a person who has been in many different energy businesses over the years. In fact, it's David, I think you said you've been in seven different businesses that you've started in yeah, your life. I'm sort of a serial entrepreneur for <laughs> clean energy. Well, David Winkleman is my guest today, and uh, David has uh, been involved with water. He's been involved with a very famous brother, Babe Winkleman, in the fishing industry. Uh, but you're now really heavily into solar energy. Maybe you could just give us a little bit about your background, how you got into this sort of business. Well, when I was a kid growing up, uh, my reward for doing my chores at home was to go fishing in the creek. And when I was about nine, ten years old, the farmers up the watershed all started using anhydrous ammonia and other chemicals, and the creek turned into an algae-choked mess. And I got sores on my legs, and the frogs all died, and the fish died, and I'm like, what is going on? And nobody really knew. My dad said, oh yeah, the frogs got red leg disease, or whatever that was, they were hemorrhaging. And so as I got into high school and college, my little professor said, what's going on with the crick? And so I studied sciences really hard to learn that. And I learned about water, and I learned a lot about water. And I started the Water Foundation. And one of the reasons why is because I love to fish, and now they say we shouldn't eat the fish because there's too much mercury in the adult fish. And that's... Where does the mercury come from? Well, it comes from energy, it comes from power, it comes from coal. So that's kind of how I got into the whole water slash energy thing. The, the reason for my being in energy is because of clean water. And you, you've, I know you have a really a rich past in doing a lot of media things. Uh, as I said, you, were, you worked with your brother, Babe, and you've done a lot of uh, sick little uh, video clips and sound clips on the radio stations over the years. So you have yeah. a pretty varied background in media too, don't you? Yeah, conservation media is what we call it. And trying to get little sound bites of information out from my buddy Bog Frog, who is a spokesphibian for uh, all of nature. And do you still do some of the, the Water Foundation stuff? It's still on the air, 28 years and running. It's still it's on the air. It's the longest continuous uh, conservation program on the air. Wow. And how big of an area does this cover? Minnesota mostly? Or? No, we're across the country. Really? We get Portland to Vermont and the stations in between. And so do you do those shows still out of your home? Or yes. Or out, out of your studio? Over? Yes, and now it's so easy, you know, with digital media. Mm -hmm. We just feed it through the internet and stations download it. Right. And I know for uh, quite a while you also got into wind energy. And yes, you I started a wind turbine company, and uh, that's still going to bear some fruit uh, eventually. Uh, we have some great technology for small wind. Now, is that mostly at the residential level? Well, residential and farm and ranch and small commercial. Okay, but not the, the things that we think of these large energy farms now, or Excel and some of those companies. I didn't here. work on those uh, except from a distance. But now our inventor said that we can have the patent for large wind too, so I'm probably gonna get in the large wind eventually as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about solar because that's kind of the theme of our program today. Uh, I used to be in the energy conservation business back in the 70s, way back when gas was really getting expensive and there was a, a huge move and a lot of interest in solar energy. But the photovoltaic cells, those cells that convert uh, solar into electricity, were not very efficient. I think there were a lot of them that were 3% efficient. Uh, the solar that we saw put on homes was not real efficient. It was pretty crude, uh, but people started doing it to experiment with it. It's come a long ways since then, hasn't yeah. it? Well, what, you think what can about you tell us about the impact of solar? Uh, yes, solar has become more efficient. But our cell phones and all of our devices that we use in cyberspace, if it wasn't for the solar panels on the satellites, nothing would work. 
So the solar works in outer space where it's 273 degrees below zero. So the solar is a different form of energy from turbine energy. What I mean is that all of our electricity has been made using turbines where magnets spin near copper wires. And that excites electrons in the copper wires and generates electricity. Well, that's the only form of electricity we have on Earth except for solar. Solar is photons, little packets of energy from the sun. Those packets of energy hit the silicon on the panels and it excites an electron to move. And that movement of electrons is what voltage or electricity is. So it's a new way. And I say we, we need to go past the age of fire where we're not burning something to turn a turbine, like coal or oil or wood or whatever, to turn a turbine. You know, water is, is good because water turns turbines too. So um, hydro power is not in the age of fire, but all the other forms of energy, let's move past the age of fire and stop polluting the air. There, there's um, a number of people who are agreeing with you. I've been reading a number of articles about that. Uh, even propane natural gas with that, with that are claimed to be real, uh, burning clean and clear. They, they're still byproducts of that that are not health, uh, healthy and helpful. I would invite a, the people who are saying how clean they are to run a pipe from that into their home and see how long they live. <laughs> because <clears throat> there's always emissions when you burn something. And if it's just simply carbon dioxide, you can die from that. But there's carbon monoxide literally in everything that we burn. Now, the, the power companies, the large power companies and our rural power companies are starting to offer people some packages where you can purchase solar energy. Uh, you, are, you aren't actually buying the solar panels to put on your home, but you're paying for that investment and for some of that solar that those companies have invested in. Um, it's really interesting if uh, I've been watching the price increases and the request for price increases for electricity this year and well some of the jumps are, are becoming pretty significant yeah and are we getting to the point where pretty soon the average person who just lives in in a, in a home in rural Minnesota can start looking at solar as a real alternative to electricity and heat yes certainly absolutely it's a matter of how we purchase it if you go write out a check for the whole amount up front, that's something that most people you know, can't do. But there are lease programs, which are kind of like leasing a car, where you just, if you have good credit, you can sign up for a lease, and they'll put the solar panels on your roof, and the solar electricity pays the lease. Plus, it pays a little profit for the person leasing it, and it reduces your electric bill at the same time. And then after, 10, 15 years, whatever the term of the lease is, then it flips over to you as the owner and you can have free electricity the rest of your life. Hmm. Now, I know Minnesota has some in incentives for getting into solar. Are there federal incentives yet or have they been taken off? No, uh, there are some great federal incentives. Uh, the big one is called the investment tax credit. It's a 30% investment tax credit, which means if you owe $10,000 on your taxes, you can get 30% of this or 3,000 bucks. It'll just wipe out that tax burden that you have. So there's an investment tax credit from the federal government. Then there's what they call rapid depreciation, MACRS, Modified Accelerated Cost Reduction System, which allows you to write the whole thing off in six years or five years in other states. Yeah. And that is for business people only who can claim the tax deductions for it. So are, is there any size level for that business? I mean, does it have to be a certain level of income? or No, a, no. It's, it, they have to be making money, of course. In so order it could to be a grocery store. Debt. It could be a, a gas grocery station. Grocery stores are great for it because groceries are trying to keep the food cold. And you're running air compressors all the time, you know, chillers, uh, which are consume a huge amount of electricity. So you, if you cover the grocery store with solar panels, it kind of acts like a shield where it stops the hot rays of the sun from hitting the roof because they're like two feet off the roof. So first of all, it cools the roof. Secondly, it creates electricity uh, during the hottest part of the day, which is when your groceries are getting warm. So for grocery stores and frozen foods businesses, anybody, beverage companies that are trying to keep their food cold, uh, solar is a perfect thing. Now, um, 
your business is called Innovative Power Systems. And I know that you've worked uh, in a lot of different areas, but before we get into application issues, are there areas in Minnesota where you're seeing some real growth in solar? Yes, it, it goes by power company. You know, we have states where that have borders, but if you look at power, energy companies have their own borders. And those borders are what we go by for different incentives. There are incentives for small co-ops, some of them have small rebates, but Xcel Energy, which is the largest investor-owned utility in Minnesota, has got several really good incentives. So in the Xcel area, mm -hmm. of solar is booming right now. There's companies coming from the East Coast and the West Coast because Xcel has opened up the door so much here. So Xcel, I know, I know they've done some things to win too, haven't they? Do they have some wind farms too? They're one of the largest consumers or now producers of wind energy in the world. And uh, Minnesota is like 16% wind energy now, our power. So uh, Excel and Minnesota Power and Alliant Energy and Otter Tail Power, all the big ones, have invested heavily in wind. They're starting to do now utility scale solar, which is exciting to me because you get a few of those jobs, you can retire. <laughs> now, if you uh, look at the efficiency of solar panels, especially in converting to electricity, where are they at now as, a com as a p opposed to 20 years ago? Well, it's about at 18% across the board. Some companies have tweaked a little bit more efficiency out of it, like sun power, or up to 20%, but that's because they don't have any white space on the solar panels. Can you imagine the solar panels got all these cells mm -hmm. with the white space in between? Well, they've put the white space in the back, oh. so it gives them another couple of percent Okay. But we've about maxed out silicon. But there are other things, we're experimenting with different grades of silicon and different kinds of other minerals and metals that are also photoreactive. And there are going to be various kinds of solar panels invented for the future too. So they'll be probably much more efficient than what we're working with today. Well, it doesn't matter because there's, when you say efficient, it just means uh, does it make electricity or not? Because there's nothing burned. There's nothing used. It's a matter of how many square feet of roof space will you need to have. Okay. You know, roof space by itself is wasted space generally. I mean, nobody does anything on their roof hardly. Mm -hmm. So why not cover the roof with solar panels? It helps protect the roof because the rain and the sun and the hail won't get on to the actual roof membrane. And the electricity that's made as a result of it will help power the building. So you get a, like a triple effect to protect your building from solar. So if um, I were to call your business and you were to come over to my home uh, in a residential setting, what would be the steps that we would look at when you just, if we decided we wanted to do something as a homeowner? Good question. Well, the first thing is what I call a rough feasibility. In other words, do you have space on your roof or rather does your roof face to the south? And if it faces to the east or west, you're not going to get very efficient amount of solar. It'll cut it back by maybe 40%. But if you have a southern facing roof, that'll work great. If you don't have a roof, then you can use some acreage or some ground mount. And ground mounting, I kind of like that even better than roof mounting because it's a lot easier to work on it. Mm -hmm. Now, that reminds me of, you know, the other part of this is maintenance. Uh, solar as opposed to wind has very little maintenance. Wind, you've got moving parts. You've got blades and gears and all those things moving, wearing out. Solar, there are no moving parts. The photons from the sun hit this panel and it moves the electrons inside the panel without actually moving anything in the panel itself. They're just electrons decay from one shell to another. And that generates electricity. So with no moving parts, there's hardly any maintenance and any cost to keep them up. Plus now we have like a 25 year warranty on almost all solar panels. Hmm. 25 years, now think of that for a car or any other thing you'd buy, where can you get something with a 25 year warranty? Mm -hmm. And it's not only warranted to look like a solar panel, it's warranted to give you the energy. So a company here from the Twin Cities uh, 10K Solar, they've broken it down so where after 25 years you'll still get 90% of the rated power from day one. Hmm. And that's guaranteed in writing. They'll give you either your money back or give you more panels. Hmm. So you've come to my house. We've kind of done a feasibility study. 
uh, we've determined I could do it on my roof because I got a south facing roof or I could do it in an, in an open area because I've got that too. And it sounds to me like you'd be leaning a little bit more towards the open area because of maintenance would be a little easier to maintain. Yeah, easy construction too. And then how do you determine to size this? How do you determine what size okay. that we should do? A uh, one kilowatt, which is 1,000 watts, equals about 100 square feet. So if you look at your electric bill and let's say it's uh, 300 bucks a month. Well, you figured that backwards, uh, let's say at 10 cents a kilowatt hour, that's about 3,000 kilowatt hours per month. And if you know that the solar panel, uh, you know, how, what size you have, let's say it's a 10 kilowatt array, each kilowatt will produce about 1,250 kilowatt hours per year. So a 10 kilowatt array will produce about 12,500 kilowatt hours per year. And if you uh, divide that out, that uh, comes to about $300 a month. So do power companies still buy excess power if you generate excess power? Is that still on yes, the books? Yes, Minnesota's had one of the first and best programs for net metering. It's called net metering, so it's net net. In other words, if you buy electricity from the power company, it's 10 cents a kilowatt hour. But if you sell back to them, it's not at 5 cents, it's at 10 cents. And they're required by law to pay you the 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And that net metering has allowed many people to get into solar because in the summertime, <clears throat> you may not be using as much electricity, so you can bank up a credit or you can take a check, either or. You, when okay. you sign the application, you tell them whether you want a credit or a check. And in your case, you would be the installer, I would guess. Yes. Uh, not me personally. But your company would be. Yeah, I'm yeah. too old of a creature. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> um, when you have, uh, let's just say that a homeowner is uh, heated with wood, but they were interested in using the solar for their hot water, um, for the wash tank, the wash tub or whatever, for hot water purposes and electricity purposes. So you would determine how many kilowatts you need or how, many, how much square footage you would need, and then you would amortize that out over the length of, the, of what? What the homeowner thinks they can pay? Do they have an uh, option of paying so much a month when they install these systems, or how, how do they finance that? Yes, uh, <clears throat> all of the above. Okay. It, it's dependent upon Just the Just like situation. any other thing you would buy. Yes, it is. It, okay. It's a matter of, number one, what can you afford? Uh, you know, because if you have a small home, you don't want to spend, you know, a million dollars on it. You want to spend maybe twenty, thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. And so if you break that twenty or thirty thousand down into a monthly payment, you know, you're probably talking two hundred dollars a month where your electricity bill used to be $300 a month. Mm -hmm. So you save $100 a month over the period of time of the lease, and then let's say 15 years the lease is up, in other words it's paid for the whole 20000 then you'll get the $300 a month uh, benefit on your electric bill. Mm -hmm. the, the, some of the comp there's, there's a move of course to get rid of some of the coal plants and to stop generating electricity with coal as we're starting to have these larger wind fields and solar fields. So I think that all of us who used to pay pretty reasonable electric costs, I think we're starting to see that those are going to go up significantly, aren't they? Well, if we would charge the coal companies for the pollution cleanup, the price of electricity would double. The problem really? here in America is that we're not paying for the cleanup. They're able to dump whatever they want into the air pretty much and not worry about it. See, in Europe now and in other countries, they're starting to charge for the cleanup. And that's why the price of electricity is up to 20 or 30 cents a kilowatt hour there. Is that what it is in Europe right now? Yes. So that really makes solar and wind more attractive, Oh, it, it does. Yeah. And, you know, from construction, what crew on construction can come onto a job, dirty up the job, and then not do the cleanup? Well, in our power consumption, you know, we're dirtying the environment without doing the cleanup. And that just slays me. That's got to stop. That's why I say the age of fire is over. We need to stop burning things, period. Because every time you burn something, you're dumping pollution in the air. And solar can allow us to do that. Solar plus batteries. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back on something you said a little bit ago, and that is on solar hot water, solar thermal. There are two kinds of solar. One is solar thermal, which generates heat. And the other is solar electric. Now we've been talking all about solar electric today, but there's a solar water furnace, if you will, that heats up the water, that's 80% efficient. Hmm. 
compare that to the 20% on the electric. So solar hot water is the much more efficient way to go. So you only need like two panels, two four by 10 panels, to do all your domestic hot water for an average family. And if you want to heat your home with it, well, it's not going to work in the middle of winter when you need it the most because there's no sun out. But you have to have the solar combined with another form of heat to do that in the wintertime. So solar is an intermittent form of energy. And that's why I say a battery backup is a really key thing. And now with the smart batteries from Tesla and other companies, the battery knows when it needs to turn on. So let's say the, the power company has peak loads that they're trying to avoid because of the high cost of the peaks. Well, we can program the batteries to turn on during the peak periods and help the power companies too. So with all the technology coming about, all these smart things, it's going to benefit solar and energy as much as anything else in the world. I know there's been a huge investment in getting better batteries. Uh, that, that is probably the key, isn't it, down the road to be able to, to stretch that balance yeah. out, that energy uh, level, so we don't have these ups and downs and run out of energy when we need it. Uh, so maybe that for a, a, an average homeowner who doesn't want to make the huge investment of $20,000, going into the thermal side where doing your hot water would be a first good first step. Yeah, for five or six thousand dollars you can get a couple panels and a tank and all the plumbing and everything the pumps needed to run a solar hot water system. That's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. But there you have more moving parts. Okay. So you've got some maintenance issues so you got to be aware of that up front. <clears throat> Although I've seen solar thermal installations that have been maintenance free for 25 years. Wow. You start with good pumps, mm -hmm. you know, and good mm -hmm. piping. So the solar thermal is not just hot water, but also is hot air. You can have solar panels that are just hollow with a black paint on the inside so the sun goes through, heats up on that black paint, and then the air is sucked out of the panel and that heats the house. So the solar hot air, solar hot water, and solar electric are the three kinds of solar. Well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the applications you've done, because I know you've been involved in a pretty good range of them. What are, what are some of the things you've been doing? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I started uh, back in the 80s with my own solar panels. Uh, uh, before that, we put up a wind turbine in the 70s on my parents' farm. Well, wind energy is actually solar, too, because the wind blows because the air masses, which are created by the sun, move around, and that creates the wind. So wind is actually solar. But uh, we started with small wind, and then I went to some small solar back in 84. And then I've done a variety of different residential and small businesses. And then I've gotten into some large businesses most recently. And I'll show you some video footage of a large business with my drone camera covering the whole roof of the building. You know, that's able to generate like $6,000 a month worth of electricity. Wow. So solar is scalable. You can go up to utility grade scale, let's say 50 megawatts, you know, and generate a million dollars worth of electricity per month from solar. And all you need, you know, is 40 or 50 acres. You know, so if all of the world were powered by solar, it'd take like less than 1% of the whole world's land mass to power everybody with wow. solar. That's amazing. Yeah, it is really wonderful technology. So when you've done these larger industrial setups, do you do this yourself or do you have... Well, our company, Innovative Power, does them. Winkleman Building Corporation does them. We work with other companies uh, like uh, Blattner Energy. They do some of the big utility scale things. And then there's all sorts of other contractors that are tied in with it. We try to use local electricians so they understand exactly how it works. We try to use, you know, local excavators and dirt movers and things like that for doing the digging in the trenches and so on. And you said that the solar actually is kind of pushing the wind energy out of the picture well, right price -wise. now. price-wise. Price-wise, yeah. at, at least at the residential and small commercial level. That's right. Uh, I was in a meeting about a month ago when I heard executives from Blattner Energy say that they have got solar down to the price now in a large installation in Wyoming or Montana where they've underpriced coal. Really? With solar. So it's like less than three and a half cents per kilowatt hour that the solar is able to do. 
Wow. And wind is down to that four cents a kilowatt hour as well. Wow. And that's what we're paying for coal. Are, are, you, so. are you seeing resistant, yes, resistance from power companies to, to move in this direction? Well, absolutely. They're I mean, you look at, hang, hanging on we're, coal. we're eating their revenues. <clears throat> you know, they don't make any money unless they invest in the solar themselves, which they're doing now. Mm -hmm. They can see the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. But power companies are resistant, but most of them are kind enough to allow, you know, small solar uh, when they're service areas. And some of them are investing in solar community gardens. And that's a neat way to go where you put up a large solar array and then everybody can buy a few panels, let's say that don't have a good roof or don't have an ability to, they don't, maybe they own an apartment. Mm -hmm. So they can still buy solar energy by buying into these solar community gardens. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we're about out of time. Um, I guess, uh, the, what's the best way to get a hold of you if someone is interested in, in working with uh, innovative power <coughs> systems? Well, uh, do you have I a do, website? Uh, we have a website, uh, ips-solar.com. And then uh, my phone number, uh, I generally answer my phone. Um, we office out of St. Paul, out of St. Cloud, and Brainerd, so we can serve pretty much the whole state. And we have crews that actually go in a five-state area. Wow. And so. are, is Minnesota ahead of the neighboring states in the upper Midwest in solar? Yes. We are? Yes. And that's that because of Xcel Energy and Minnesota Power. Okay. Both those companies are doing really wow. well. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how it comes in the next four or five years, David. Uh, you're on the cutting edge of doing new things, and you have been for a long time. Good luck with your endeavors. And again, the name of your company is Innovative Power Systems. And uh, being on the cutting edge is interesting, but you get cut. Yeah, it isn't always, it's always <laughs> it some arrows in the back. <laughs> it isn't always fun, <clears throat> is it? It is. Thanks for jumping on with us. Appreciate well, it. My pleasure. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time. Mm -hmm.